relates to as it relates to the postal sector. Um, this webinar series has been organized under the umbrella of um, Committee 2 of the UPU's Council of Administration, in, in, and it has two, a, a twofold objective. Um, firstly, it's actually intended to provide a platform for dialogue um, and an exchange of views and experiences that will help inform the work of the UPU on a soon to be published um, research study on the evolution of the universal service obligation uh, as it relates to the postal sector. Um, and secondly, we're also hoping to deep dive into some of the key policy and regulatory challenges and opportunities that the pandemic has thrown up uh, for the sector uh, with a view to getting a sense of what the road ahead may look like for governments uh, in addressing the needs of the sector. As you are aware, postal regulation is an important tool by which governments can effectively position the sector to meet its rapidly evolving challenges and opportunities, as well as securing the critical infrastructure that the postal network represents through which various public policy objectives can be achieved. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic and the accompanying lockdown um, have effectively revealed the importance of the postal services to society. In fact, many governments have identified the services provided by postal and delivery operators as essential to the functioning of society during this time of crisis. Uh, posts have often designated by governments as an essential service, allowing them to operate while the activities of many other service providers uh, have been severely restricted. Importantly, some posts were able to rapidly implement new services in areas such as health, education and welfare, um, and raising questions about the expanding scope of postal policy and regulation and how best to engage with ministries and regulators from other sectors. Uh, it is in this context um, that this webinar series explores the postal policy and regulatory responses to the COVID-19 pandemic. The series will focus on three main themes. Um, firstly, the growing mandate of posts as an essential service provider. Secondly, the growing trend in changes to the quality of service requirements under national uh, universal service obligations, either in response to the pandemic uh, and or policy measures aimed at securing the sustainability of postal services. And finally, the funding of support measures for postal services, again, either resulting from the pandemic or uh, as part of a, a broader package of measures uh, aimed at maintaining the postal infrastructure. Our webinar today, takes up the first theme, and, and that is of the growing mandate of posts uh, in the provision of essential services. This webinar will explore the um, uh, range of essential services that um, have um, allowed us to uh, 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 take up as part of the response uh, to the pandemic. Um, and it'll consider the important contributions that the post has made uh, to that frontline uh, COVID-19 response. We'll also discuss what challenges and opportunities these contributions uh, have presented for stakeholders such as governments and postal operators um, with, with a view to trying to sort out some of the implications for the future of the sector. Now, before we begin, uh, let me just um, talk to a couple of administrative points. Firstly, I'd like uh, to request kindly that all participants keep their mics uh, on mute uh, so as to allow for the panel discussion to take place uh, effectively. Um, and second, uh, if you do have any questions uh, to the panelists or as the discussions progress, that you present these uh, on the chat. Um, uh, which is uh, the chat function, which is at the bottom of the screen, uh, and we'll pick it up from there and, 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 and present it to uh, the appropriate panelists. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce our panelists for the webinar today. They are uh, Dr. Bruno Pasolitsko, who is the director uh, who is a director with Copenhagen Economics. Now, with qualifications in industrial organization and economics, Bruno is a very familiar face in postal regulatory circles. Um, in his work with Copenhagen Economics, he provides regulatory competition and impact assessment work with sectoral experience spanning across um, technology, media, and telecoms, uh, digital, online platforms, postal and delivery, utilities, and e-commerce. Uh, we also have with this uh, Dr. Sorry, Mr. Yutaka Kitagami, 
uh, who is the uh, who is a directive at the International Affairs Office of the Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications, uh, Japan. Now, um, Yutaka-san graduated from the University of Tokyo with a BA in economics and has been with the MIC for over 20 years. Uh, and he has served uh, in a number of increasingly responsible positions uh, in his time with MIC. He has served as co-chair of Committee 5 uh, for the UPU Council of Administration, um, which deals with development matters uh, for the past five years. Uh, and he also acts as vice chair of the executive council of the Asia Pacific Postal Union, um, which is a regional uh, organization dealing with postal matters for the Asia Pacific. In addition, he has served uh, as a lecturer at various universities in Japan. And our final panelist is Mr. Vincenzo Aurelio. Uh, many of you will know Vincenzo. He's the head of relations with international authorities and organizations for, for Post Italiani. Vincenzo has served in Post Italiani since 2000. Uh, he has held the position of head of international accounting and statistics for well over 10 years um, with uh, significant experience in international postal markets with a particular reference to uh, the uh, remuneration systems of, um, of, of those markets. He has been in his current role since 2018 and has led several development projects in the areas of management control and technological innovation. Now, Vincenzo, of course, brings a wealth of knowledge and practical experience as a senior employee of a postal operator. Uh, with that, uh, welcome, gentlemen, and we will begin our webinar. Uh, first up, I'd like to call upon Bruno to address this. Bruno, you have the floor, please. Thank you very much. Thank you to the UPYB for the uh, invitation. Thank you all in the audience uh, for um, dedicating the time to listen and contribute. And last but not least, thank you to the fellow um, uh, panelists. Uh, I uh, wait for the slide to be uh, put on the screen. Uh, in the meanwhile, I will uh, say a few seconds words about the Copenhagen Economics, which is a specialized firm. It's a medium-sized um, company providing uh, applied research and uh, consulting advice across the sectors um, with a, a special uh, view and interest in the, in the postal and delivery sector. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is relevant because the COVID-19 question is a question that has impacted the whole world. How, when was it the last time there was an important trend and factor affecting every single country of the planet and making us think hard about what happens to our lives, to our health, to our society, and then to the economy and, 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 and the business um, uh, factors that drive uh, activity in many sectors, including in the postal and delivery sector, which is in, in the front line. Um, therefore, we've been able to see this impact across different countries of the world. In the next slide, please. Um, the impacts of the COVID-19 touch multiple sectors of the economy. As a company that specializes in multiple economic policy areas, multiple sectors, we have not seen any single sector that has not been affected. This is a very significant impact. It will continue to shape uh, the fabric of economy and society in the coming um, uh, years. And in fact, I urge all professionals in each of the sectors, whether they are working in telecoms or in postal and delivery as is today and then postal regulation to think about the impacts also in the other sectors also because clearly the postal sector and postal demand which is the focus of my introductory remarks today uh, depends on uh, the situation in other sectors of the economy which uh, which count on postal and delivery to um, to uh, provide uh, services so uh, it's a, it's a, it's a systemic sector and therefore needs to look broadly in the economy and broadly in what covid-19 has been doing and will continue to do to economic impacts. Next slide, please. Um, we've seen in the first analysis, as this has been confirmed, uh, that the impact of COVID-19 has been heterogeneous across sectors. From the earlier forecast to the more to closer realizations and a variety of sources from the OECD, uh, um, uh, World Bank, our own early modeling and ongoing analysis, we do see clearly a very skewed impact across uh, across sectors and of course some of the more um, sectors where the provision of services and products requires close proximity the close contact which has been uh, blocked by the restrictions these are the ones affected the most and um, uh, we do see um, sectors that also have been able to rebound and grow because the earlier forecasts, such as the one shown here for example in the area of information and communication have shown um, opportunities to grow and different and different ways to um, to take um, business. 
Next slide, please. Looking at the macroeconomic pictures, which is the center of this introductory remark that I hope can stimulate the conversation by the, the, the panelists and now the person in between yourselves and this expert panelist, so I should move as fast as possible. The key top line is one that is not a mystery. There has been a global contraction in GDP, uh, estimated around minus 3.5% for the year 2020. There are more statistics coming around and you know, a single statistic for the entire world is still a difficult exercise and the jury is not out yet. There are variations across different countries, um, yet this is a major, a major uh, number. It may look uh, small, but already a minus, uh, you know, 3.5, 4% contraction is a, is a large uh, upset in what had been a path of global growth. What does this mean for postal demand and, and the postal sector? Next slide, please. Um, first of all, the postal sector is a sector which is a large employer in many countries, in many the largest employer, and the picture of employment has changed significantly across many countries and uh, globally, for sure. Here is a, a broad spectrum of countries, some of the largest economies, all um, experiencing a big hit in unemployment. So this is uh, also changing the picture of, of, uh, of uh, work. Uh, next slide, please. Then the question is, what does the economic profession, what can the economic profession when applying postal economic models do? What are the strengths and limitations of these models? Uh, I think we have to be uh, realistic here. Uh, economics on its own doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't have all the answers for sure. Um, we've done some exercise in order to show the, how dramatic the, 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 the situation and the impacts have been. So first of all, uh, we've taken the information on, on volumes from the year 2019 and the information on, on um, the economic GDP impacts, as discussed earlier on. Um, together with uh, the literature on postal economics, so econometric studies that country by country have been able to model in the past how changes in GDP, therefore the macroeconomic picture, are associated with changes in postal demand, um, we've been able to create a static prediction, which is not fully satisfactory, but it helps to show the comparison. And together with the ongoing trend in e-substitution, the ongoing trend in volume, in volume letter mail decline, these two effects, the ongoing letter mail decline, plus the effect that could be predicted thanks to the literature of the change in GDP, gives a minus 6.5% decline in letter mail. Now, this would be the static model, maybe a simplistic economic view of what the macro environment does to postal demand. However, we do know that the reality is much harsher than that. Again, the jury is still not out yet. Consolidated figures that have our global significance are not uh, published yet. Some operators have reported results by quarter, by year, so some information is coming. And certainly the impact have been on letter mail volumes larger than 6.5%. You know, one of the earlier forecasts associated with the UPU has been at minus 21%. That's how dramatic it is, which means that models, uh, simplistic models which just associate GDP, so the broader economy, to what happens to the postal sector, don't capture the full reality. There may be a starting point, but when there are significant economic, macroeconomic crises, such as the one linked to COVID, and I would say also the response, the big macroeconomic stimulus and response, which is coming now thanks to government uh, expenditures, um, one needs to be to double click and look, uh, look um, more in depth. At, at the outcomes. Ultimately, um, both demand and supply have been affected by the um, pandemic. And there are um, there is a digital wedge effect. There may be shock effects to postal demand that are not um, that are go beyond what the GDP prediction would do. Let's look at the next slide to comment further on this. First of all, a key question is whether these effects are temporary or more persistent. We've looked at the previous global macroeconomic shock, the so-called global financial um, crisis, let's say centered around 2007, 2008. And then we've looked at the volume decline that started there and trying to separate between countries for a first um, screening exercise concentrated on Europe, uh, um, between countries that were at the time of the crisis less digitally active for the type of communications that are about B2B, B2C, G2C, which, which, uh, which uh, are the basic, 
basis of, 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 of lateral male demand versus countries that were already more uh, practiced and more practiced in, in using these digital tools. And we've seen that the global financial crisis has been followed by two different trends. So the impact of a global shock like this, in our view, also with COVID, will depend on the level of digitization and, and practice of digitization in each country uh, and then how firms and governments communicate with the citizens and, and each other. At the same time, COVID-19, because of the restrictions, because of the uh, social distancing, and because of the widespread understanding that digital tools would provide a safety net, is also an activity which will strengthen and stimulate digitization. And the many uh, funding uh, provided, for example, as in Europe in terms of recovery funding, also include components that stimulate the digitization. So this may be an additional impact on the, on the postal sector, perhaps also an opportunity. Next slide. A final question as economists when looking at the profit line and when thinking about the role of post of essential service, which is the topic for today, is to think about the bottom line, the profitability, the, the, the revenues that can help sustain a variety of services that postal operators provide, including the, all, the, all the very important essential services. And here we cannot abstract from the profitability of the business. The profitability of the business is, is, is at the center. Uh, there will be also a forthcoming uh, webinar dedicated to the question of uh, uh, the role of uh, state funding uh, in, in, uh, in postal operations in light of COVID-19. That's a very relevant question. First of all, thinking about the profitability, um, our economic analysis of, of various um, postal businesses confirm the business intuition that a lost $1, one euro, one yen of revenue from letter mail decline hits profits much harder than a gain $1 from uh, increased uh, parcels sales. And this is because of the different margins available in these two segments as things stand right now. What we've done it, then is to think about how a change in the mix between letter and parcels affects therefore the ability to generate profits from a stylized postal operator. So this is not a country specific analysis, but it is based on, on realistic uh, uh, assumptions on, on what the postal operators uh, business lines look like uh, today. Um, taking as input uh, previous predictions on the impact on letter volumes and parcel volumes, so a minus 19% for letter mail volume and a plus 26% for parcel volume, we've asked ourselves with a simplified model, what will that do to profitability? Will that be good for postal businesses, the fact that there is all this growth in parcel volumes? And the answer is yes, but not good enough in terms of overall profitability. So this is a, 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 a concern. Uh, point at, at the general level. And uh, in, in our stylized model, which is not country specific, and of course, results will, will change by country, um, this would lead to a clear profit decline of 20% fall in total profits, simply because the even though the growth in parcel volumes is larger in, 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 um, in, in volume terms, uh, generally, it is not sufficient to bring in um, the same amount of profits as the digital substitution of, of letter mail, the decline in letter volumes uh, brings as a negative impact on the, on the, um, on the profits. Um, last slide, I think we close here. Um, so on these words, I am very curious to hear uh, and learn from the distinguished panelists uh, today. Um, COVID-19 is a very significant uh, macro trend and will continue to impact for bad and, and, and maybe for good with, with the world and the governments um, coming together to find ways to strengthen the economy. Therefore, um, I think it's important to ground in the, in, the, um, in the challenges, the discussion about the positive role of, of, of the post uh, as essential services, because it, is, uh, it, is not, it cannot be separated from the question of, uh, of, uh, of um, sustainability of the business and, and the future of the postal service. I stop here and look forward to questions and comments. Thank you. Um, thanks very much, Bruno, and um, thank you for that um, uh, very interesting perspective on 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 the impacts of COVID uh, on, on on the sector. Uh, there were two things that struck me in, in terms of what you were saying, which I think I'd like us um, um, uh, as, as, sorry us all uh, to sort of think about a bit more as we get into the dialogue a bit later on. One is um, uh, you know that the sense that. Um, despite the growth in parcel volumes uh, on, on the back of uh, 
the delivery of uh, everyday items to uh, to households uh, in, in in times of lockdown. Uh, this may not actually translate into better profitability for postal operators and, and in fact, uh, does raise question marks in terms of their ongoing sustainability. Um, uh, that's something that's worth sort of thinking a bit more uh, in terms of the, the broader context of whether uh, there is actually then a, a need to sort of think through uh, uh, for a, a greater focus on diversification. Um, in, in, in terms of services to increase sustainability. And, and the second point, uh, which I thought um, uh, you, you brought to the discussion is this idea that um, um, the, the level of digitization and, and the, uh, the, the possibility or the capability of post to be able to uh, roll out a range of digitized uh, services um, or at least operate more effectively in a, in a digital world uh, could make uh, a difference. And, and, and maybe this is something that we need to come back to as well in, in our discussions a bit later on. But thank you, Bruno. And, and, and with that, um, I'll move on to uh, Yutaka-san, uh, who will talk us through uh, the perspectives uh, of a government in relation to uh, the policy responses uh, uh, to the pandemic uh, in, in the postal sector. Yutaka-san, you, you have the floor. Sorry, you took us your your mute. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much uh, for uh, uh, the establishing very uh, meaningful uh, webinar series uh, for IB. And uh, uh, yeah, I'm very uh, feel honored to uh, be uh, invited to uh, as a uh, first webinar panel panel. And uh, also thank you for the uh, all the participants. I think so today's uh, the um, main theme is uh, uh, so what are the essential uh, postal services uh, in the uh, post COVID-19 era. So uh, I'd like to uh, show you uh, what uh, MIC and I think as uh, uh, essential functions of postal services in the uh, post COVID-19 era. Uh, especially from the uh, public policy perspectives. So uh, this is a, a total uh, summary of the, uh, what I think uh, is uh, important. And so, uh, of course, uh, the uh, universal delivery of postal items across the nation and around the world is uh, uh, the core uh, role of the uh, postal sector. However, uh, under the uh, pandemic, uh, five elements are getting uh, uh, emerged uh, as uh, uh, other uh, essential functions of the postal sector. The first one is uh, to correct uh, social disparities. And the second is uh, uh, function as a social last resort. And third one is a hub uh, or hub for uh, bringing solutions for uh, social barriers or social problems. And the uh, uh, other one is, uh, is to disseminate new values, uh, uh, for example, by uh, brought by the uh, cutting edge technologies, etc. And uh, the last one is the uh, hub of the DX. Uh, uh, I think the Dr. Uh, uh, Bruno uh, uh, mentioned uh, this aspect as well. And at first, uh, I'd like to touch the uh, uh, the base or the uh, importance uh, uh, of the, uh, the infrastructure uh, because uh, to formulate a resilient, capable, and universal network is the key to, enhan to enhance all these uh, five essential functions. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, the Japan situation. Uh, actually, is a, a Post office is one of the most densely populated um, the social infrastructures in Japan. Uh, if you are in Japan, uh, you have been to Japan, there are so many convenience stores uh, around the cities. Uh, however, uh, in the uh, mountain places, uh, for example, in a village of uh, the 30 
in village of 300 uh, people or, or population. Uh, usually there is only post office uh, for the financial institution and the hub of the uh, community, etc. And uh, in Japan, including such remote area, uh, post office is uh, in every uh, six, uh, about 600 meters. So uh, if you walk through the street, uh, there is another post office uh, in the city. And uh, this is uh, uh, protected, this density is protected by public regulation. And so that's why the even uh, um, post office is uh, in very small island, remote island. And actually there is a post, post office on the top of Mount Fuji too. And uh, uh, so, um, so infrastructure is very important and uh, I uh, um, introduced some uh, elements of the five uh, new uh, key, element, key elements of the uh, post offices. And uh, uh, in, the, um, in the pandemic, uh, the, uh, there are a lot of uh, the sectors which are, have difficulties uh, economically and socially. And uh, the uh, government uh, aids were delivered by a postal network and uh, uh, counters of post offices are responding to the, uh, the various difficulties under uh, COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, uh, at the beginning, even uh, uh, masks are delivered uh, by post offices to uh, every household in Japan. And uh, also the uh, even uh, such a villages, uh, small villages, people can um, the, receive the aids uh, from the post office counters. And uh, uh, it's uh, I, what I uh, mentioned uh, a lot, but uh, uh, as a social result, for example, Mimamori system is uh, checking uh, the elderly and handicapped by the uh, uh, delivery persons. And uh, so, the, this kind of uh, health related and safety related services are also uh, uh, increasingly provided by post offices, uh, especially under the pandemic. And uh, the, as for the third element, uh, I think the financial inclusion is very important. Uh, so I will uh, uh, introduce some, some details later. And uh, as far as uh, to the first point, uh, um, the, uh, so not only the basic services, but also as far as the financial services, uh, uh, digital money or the, uh, for example, the blockchain related uh, services are uh, disseminated by post offices. And so it's also important from the uh, universal service point of view. And uh, uh, the interestingly, the uh, post office is uh, a physical um, station, but uh, uh, it's also a hub for DX. And uh, in Japan now, uh, 5G mobile communication based stations uh, are considered to be uh, um, positioned at uh, the post offices uh, because uh, uh, in 5G cases, there should be more and even more and or much more uh, stations than the 4G or 3G, etc. And I will introduce a little bit about uh, information bank later. And uh, the, actually, the, uh, from the uh, public uh, policy view, the structure is also important. Uh, so uh, before the uh, privatization, the, it's a government body. However, after the privatization, uh, Japan's uh, uh, post, postal um, company was divided into the Japan Post, Japan Post Bank, and Japan Postal Insurance. And importantly, Japan Post uh, are outsourced from uh, the uh, Post Bank and Post Insurance, and also private financial companies. So this means uh, the uh, Japan Post or postal network uh, get more uh, equally uh, um, uh, utilized uh, hubs or network for all the uh, financial 
private financial companies as well, not only the Japan Post Bank and Japan Postal Insurances. And uh, uh, I also touched some uh, world examples and uh, in the financial inclusion is usually for the postal savings to uh, provide with the basic uh, um, saving measures. Uh, however, uh, in the world, for example, on, uh, Namibia is providing uh, uh, smart card uh, uh, affiliated with post bank in post offices. And in Croatia, uh, the virtual currency is uh, exchanged uh, with the real money, uh, money in the post offices. Uh, that's because there are a lot of uh, the immigrants there and they need uh, such uh, services uh, in the um, coastline uh, post offices. And in Japan, uh, we are, uh, Japan Post is uh, dealing with uh, uh, digital uh, money or uh, digital currency affiliated with uh, 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 postal, postal bank in Japan. And uh, uh, this is, uh, can be utilized in the various uh, retailers across the nation. And uh, uh, so, yeah, this is uh, uh, the summary of the, uh, uh, so I skip this page. And uh, um, I'd like to uh, touch the uh, importance of the uh, uh, digital uh, aspect. And uh, Dr. Bruno said uh, uh, the digital um, preparedness is important to uh, maintain the um, growth under the pandemic. And in Japan, the, uh, the information bank is uh, getting uh, important uh, as uh, uh, the driving force of the growth uh, and at the same time protecting the uh, uh, private uh, information. And uh, it's business to uh, utilize system uh, uh, to manage personal data based on agreements on data utilization with individuals and provide such data on behalf of the individual to third parties. And uh, the, uh, actually the, um, um, the Japan Post, Post Group has a uh, so huge uh, personal data uh, because uh, most of the uh, Japanese people are using, uh, using the delivery service of post offices and also have the accounts. Uh, postal uh, financial account in the post offices. And so uh, to utilize uh, uh, this big data for the purpose of the uh, uh, various other sectors uh, are getting important and it's now under discussion. So also under the pandemic uh, uh, to have uh, the uh, regional uh, specialties uh, through the internet is also very important and uh, the uh, Japan Post is also helps to instantly it takes, uh, uh, this is Furusato Kozutsumi, it means a hometown uh, delivery parcels. And uh, so this is kind of the uh, e-commerce service in Japan's version. So this was, uh, okay, so. And uh, so lastly is, uh, um, so you may know uh, well already, but uh, uh, Japan uh, now contributing to the UPU uh, for the purpose of uh, the spreading uh, these new essential service of the post offices around the world. And uh, you know the DRM uh, to uh, make uh, the uh, post offices and postal network resilient to the uh, disasters. And uh, the, uh, I think Siba-san uh, made effort to uh, uh, um, correct the best practices around the uh, world uh, ab 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 about the various uh, social services uh, by uh, post offices. And it's now uh, available for everyone. And so the, uh, every member countries uh, can refer to the, this guide by the UPU to uh, uh, establish their own social services uh, effectively. And uh, uh, also, I, I think the, uh, this uh, Japan fund uh, cover uh, the, uh, the most of the new uh, postal key elements uh, in the uh, co post comp 
post uh, COVID-19 era. And uh, uh, we are uh, very uh, waiting for the members countries to effectively utilize uh, this service uh, uh, by the UPU. And this is the uh, end of my uh, the PowerPoint, but uh, I'd like to touch at the last point uh, that uh, these are, of course, uh, 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 managed uh, uh, with profit uh, in Japan. So uh, this is not just a public service, but uh, uh, by uh, letting uh, the uh, post offices to do this, uh, they can uh, provide these uh, important public uh, services with profits. So this is very uh, important. And uh, also another one important point is to, uh, to promote uh, the collaborations with other sectors, not only the government. And uh, uh, so it's important for the uh, uh, digital transformation. And uh, so Japan actually in the time of the, uh, the privatization, uh, we uh, inputted some uh, systematic uh, organize, organizational system to uh, make uh, this kind of collaboration easier. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Yutaka-san. That, that was a, actually a very fascinating uh, tour of um, things that are happening in Japan in terms of um, the, the variety of services that the post is engaged with uh, uh, in terms of community services. Uh, you know, I, I just took a, a quick list down. It's social services, financial services, health, regional specialities. And, and so that uh, talks to the point, I think, um, um, that this seminar is about, and that is, um, you know, to what extent can the post actually diversify into a range of other things uh, that would not only make sense from a community perspective or, or from a public policy perspective, but also, um, and this was a point that you raised, uh, which is, um, a lot of these services are being delivered on a profitable basis. So it's, uh, you know, pr profitability and in, in, in the commercial sense of what's been delivered uh, also uh, is, is a key factor. A second thing that I thought was interesting in, in what you said uh, was the importance of the structure of the sector and, and, the, and the approach the government takes to that. Because I think um, one of the things that um, matters in, in, in terms of uh, how the post operates in, a, in an economy um, and, and trying to find that balance between uh, its long uh, standing public service tradition and the expectations that governments might impose on a post um, is also the need to find that balance with profitability and, and its commercial imperatives. Um, and so structure issues is, is something that's worth sort of thinking about a bit more. Um, and, and because it's, it's, it's constantly a, a focus for governments across the world from the different models in terms of a post being purely in, in, uh, as a department of government uh, to a completely privatized situation like in Japan, where Japan uh, post is a, uh, a publicly listed company. But so, so very interesting points that you've raised, uh, Yutaka-san, and hopefully um, the, the, the points that you make will, will prompt um, our participants to also post a few questions in, in relation to some of these themes. Um, now, I'd like to move on to our final panelist, uh, Vincenzo. Uh, Vincenzo, please, you, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Shiv, uh, first of all, for, for this invitation to uh, this very interesting conference. And uh, also, let me uh, wave everyone connected uh, in different time of uh, their daily life. Uh, I will just, uh, um, you know, mention a few of uh, uh, the main points, which were the, uh, I say, the characteristic of uh, how Post Italian challenged the, uh, the COVID-19, which now, uh, let's say, is something like one and a half year, because, uh, if we look, uh, uh, we started uh, since the last uh, uh, physical uh, CA meeting we had in February 2020. And then when we went back home, we were just uh, already in uh, full pandemic. Uh, next slide, please. I, I, so I, I would just like to, um, to mention uh, three points. Can, can you switch to next slide? 
Okay, thank you very much. And uh, which are the uh, service continuity and the safety of employees, crisis strategic committee, and uh, service provider uh, at the service of government. Uh, next slide. As I was saying, we since February 2020, uh, so at the outbreak of the emergency, uh, two were our priorities. First one, keep employees safe. Secondly, uh, keep our services running. I appreciate also this comment from Utak, uh, uh, you know, referring uh, to, um, to the possibility to post, uh, to carry on their business, which uh, were obviously also finalized to uh, respect the responsibility that uh, posts have also in terms of employer uh, towards their employees. Next slide, please. How did we face uh, all the issues we were to uh, comply with. A crisis strategic committee was, uh, was engaged for meeting uh, at the beginning, even every day, and then uh, sometimes each week uh, to uh, measure what was happening. If you remember, Italy was at that time one of the country uh, impacted more than the others in Europe, uh, probably in the world at that time. And uh, so the, the situation was very critical. We never closed the postal offices. We never stopped delivery. But what we needed at that time is to find a quick measure to put in place uh, as for uh, keeping the, uh, the continuity of the services. So uh, the, the, the strategic committee was just uh, meeting for uh, understanding what was possible to do. And what we did was just, uh, you know, simple measure. I mean, each postal office, we are talking about 14,000 postal offices were uh, uh, provided with the plexiglass panel, which uh, you know, made the possibility to have the uh, uh, prescribed separation from a customer and uh, uh, the person at the counter. Safety equipment for all the counter and delivery staff, I mean, masks, gel and gloves. I'm talking about uh, quantity uh, from 10 million of pieces or 50 million of pieces of gloves were provided uh, uh, already in 2020. Uh, reduction of workforce sometime in the logistic chain to minimize human contact, reviewing uh, shift hours, uh, sanitization of mail sorting center, postal office and fleet. Also camera to detect the temperature uh, were put uh, in, the, the, in our headquarters and in each sorting center and workspaces with more than 150 employees. Information channeled to staff dedicated web portal and toll free number were measured to guarantee everyone to have enough information. Uh, the organization of operation to guarantee at least one open postal office in each area or uh, community. Next slide, please. Uh, let's say together with the, the measure, which was obviously the main challenge we had, uh, together with the, the government representatives, we were meeting very often, and the NRA, we uh, took the measure to ensure delivery services uh, and protect the customer safety at the same time. For instance, uh, uh, parcel uh, registered and issued item were deposited uh, with the addressee content in the address mailbox or in a secure location 
with a signature by the postman on their delivery uh, portable devices. Um, uh, double deposit in terms, uh, items for uh, registered mail uh, item just to give uh, customer, you know, enough time, you know, for coming to the office where they were not uh, getting it at home because they were not at home and so on. Brief suspension of business mail services to safeguard the continuity of postal services as a whole, informing partners through EMIS. And that's, thank you very much for the network the UPU makes available to us, which is a wonderful way for communicating along the world. In terms of financial, and obviously I refer to our uh, line of financial inclusion, uh, even during the worst days, I'm mentioning March, April 2000, or from December 2020 to uh, February 2021, uh, we kept open mm, the major part of offices with the measure uh, I just uh, outlined before. Actions to guarantee pension payment uh, uh, to the elderly while maintaining minimum social distances were also in place. Uh, we increased the number of open counter to pay pensions at uh, you know, days where they were to be paid. Uh, Pre-arranged schedule in alphabetical order to provide services to all customers in five working days. Uh, and uh, this is very relevant. It is the, the case to announce uh, our being at the service of the government, the partnership with the Carabinieri, which is the uh, gendarmerie police uh, in Italy for delivering the pension by them to, uh, to, to the home. I mean. What I want to also highlight is that uh, um, this crisis has definitely underlined the crucial role of the intervening postal uh, network. Because of uh, uh, our ability to deliver services in the, in the intrinsic reliability, uh, the universal service providers are trustworthy partners for government, businesses, and, and, and customers, I would say. Uh, as well as for e-commerce players and platform. The, the universal service pro providers play a relevant role in the public interest, also when dealing with the services offering outside of it, offered uh, outside of a traditional scope of postal services. I think this is one of uh, the uh, very relevant uh, element, uh, which is a, a real uh, uh, mark for uh, posts, you know, being uh, inclusion for citizens in all the services. The COVID-19 emergency confirmed the systematic role of the network offered by uh, posts beyond the universal service as a unique asset for the purpose of a state's public interest objective. It enables the offering of heterogeneous services with the guarantee of uh, unfailing accessibility throughout the territory. The most vulnerable citizen and those in remote areas rely on post deliveries to be physically connected. The sector is, however, not immune to the impact of pandemic sustainability of uh, the USO. Also, let me say that uh, sometimes we, we, we were a little bit advantaged because of our uh, positioning in the market of digital innovation and uh, uh, our, you know, uh, uh, information technology, which is the backbone of the country, we could also uh, provide a lot of services, which were not the kind of services we used to uh, we used to provide. 
this was because uh, uh, we could do that. One, one of uh, uh, the examples is the, uh, uh, our engagement based on the uh, direct request of the um, military arm is the vaccine distribution, which we have provided, we're still providing uh, all over the country. And also uh, uh, with the, uh, this possibility to book your uh, vaccine directly uh, by Post Italiana. You can do that uh, uh, at the counter, uh, like the, uh, the, the, the cash machine, just uh, instead of uh, a Banco Posta card, you put inside your insurance card, you know, the card recognizes you, and, uh, you know, you have a special screen where you can, uh, you know, book uh, based on availability uh, your, uh, your vaccine and get information uh, and so on. And also you can do that if you don't want, you can do that by app, uh, uh, the, by our portal or through the uh, delivery man in case uh, you want it. I think uh, this is what I wanted to, uh, to share with you. Thank you. So, so thank you very much, Vincenzo. And again, quite a fascinating um, um, perspective on, on, on the various things that Post Italian has done in Italy. And, and I thought there were two things that I sort of took away from uh, what you had to say. Um, one was um, you used the precise words, um, the post never stopped delivering, uh, even, even in the pandemic. Um, and, and you tied that in with this concept of the post as being a, a trustworthy partner. Uh, again, you know, I, I, what all this um, stands to is, is, is the fact that the post remains uh, still a very critical partner uh, of governments in, in, in their own respective economies. Uh, and it's a question of um, either enhancing that or, or potentially uh, sort of looking at uh, new and novel ways in which that can be further developed. Um, and the, the second thing that came out from what you had to say was um, that the very specific focus that Post Italian uh, Italian they had on on employees, uh, and uh, and I think that's a, a a critical factor, whether it's in the past or even in in, in the future, in, in terms of uh, the approach that um, uh, we we take to the postal sector as 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 governments, and 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 this point being that um, that the infrastructure is very much dependent on that human touch, and at at core, the human touch is the employee. Uh, and so the relationship with employees and, and how we focus on postal employees uh, is, is, is also a very important dimension. Now, I'm gonna stop there. What I wanna do now is, um, again, open the floor uh, for people to send through their questions through the chat function. Please feel free to um, uh, either uh, 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 dedicate a particular question to a particular uh, uh, panelist, um, and my colleague, uh, Susan Alexander, will then read it out to, to, to me and, and will then try and uh, uh, have it distributed. But I would uh, certainly encourage everyone uh, online to, to post their questions on, on the chat function. But I'm going to kick off um, a few questions for the panelists myself. Um, and, and I'm going to also invite the panelists to uh, interrogate each other uh, and, and try and dive deeper uh, into some of the, the, the key points that have been raised um, in, in, in this um, um, three presentations. Now, my, my first question is, 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 is going to be for Bruno. Uh, and, and Bruno, you talked about, uh, just going back to this point about um, Despite the, the rise uh, or surge in parcels delivery, the impact on profitability potentially isn't quite there yet. Um, are you seeing then um, in, in the work that you are doing uh, uh, a concerted move by postal operators, perhaps even supported by governments to look at other services, things that could actually help uh, increase uh, the sustainability of postal operators? Um, because some of the things that we, we've seen in, 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 in the pandemic is, um, and, and we've uh, both Yutaka san and, and Vincenzo spoke to this, uh, the rollout of services uh, that may not have been services that the post engaged with previously, but have sort of become critical. Uh, I mean, do these represent, uh, in your view, from, from as an economist, uh, a potential 
um, source of diversification and therefore new new lines of business and 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 so what 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 do posts need to do to get there and what do governments have to do by way of support and encouragement and then of course uh, bearing in mind other public policy objectives that a government might have for the economy as a whole thank you Shiva. it's a very good question it's a million billion dollar question and there is certainly a trade-off and a tension between multiple policy and economic policy objectives. One is diversification as, as a good base for business and to, uh, and to, uh, and to propel uh, postal businesses. A second one is the very well, uh, good-hearted and, and, and immediate response that the postal designated operators have uh, deployed uh, in the front line uh, in the toughest moments to uh, support the population, support the economy, keep uh, many of the countries open and deliver an important, a terrific support uh, that continues through more and more uh, services. And finally, the role of the state, uh, ministries, legislators in thinking about where is the greatest value, what resilience, what level of resilience, what infrastructure, I think Yutaka san was mentioning this concept at the start, and it's a very important concept. What infrastructures are needed for a modern society to function and be strong in the face of potential adversity while being cohesive enough? I think it's not just, not just about strength, but cohesion, the ability to be together even with social distance, for example. It feels like a paradox, but it is exactly what has been achieved thanks to the network. As I said, economists, I have to uh, also think about uh, those uh, euros and dollars and yens, which are necessary to keep a postal infrastructure in place. And um, the challenge, which is a challenge perhaps also for the, for the next uh, webinar on this uh, series of webinars, is to test whether the um, policymakers uh, are able to provide secure and stable funding lines for the services that they see fit uh, and where the postal uh, uh, industry can deliver value and contribute in a way that is, that is uh, unique and can support the society. Um, there is a conundrum here, and this is a... Um, this is also sad because despite the great support by postal uh, companies in the front line, uh, and we heard also earlier on from Vincenzo, you know, that some of these are also kind of related to the whole connections with military and other you know, important kind of defense activities. Despite this, um, the diversification into some of these services may not be as revenue supporting as other activities. And so there is a question from the demand side, the buyers, the, the, the policymakers, uh, if if uh, if um, if they like these services, then they should put a ring on it. There should be uh, adequate fundings and, and business lines that would allow financial planners and uh, business strategies to be able to count and bank on them, so to be able to be there for for the state, for society at all the times of need. So I think um, there are some hard questions for the policymakers first of all, to thinking about what they can do to uh, help the postal uh, postal sector and to what extent. There must be certainly some. Uh, rules and conditions and limits to make it uh, efficient and effective. Thank you very much, Bruno. That, um, that's very good because it sort of uh, leads me into a, 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 a question for Yutaka-san uh, as a representative of a government. Um, you know, it, it's uh, from, from the experience that we've had at the UPU, one of the one of the key predicators of success of a postal operator and, and the postal sector as a whole is the, the dialogue that takes place between a government and the postal operator and the dialogue that takes place between the postal operator and other um, partners, other players in, in the broader economy. Um, what I would like, uh, Yutaka Sun, is, is perhaps if you could share with us how MIC uh, went about uh, in the in the context of the pandemic, how did how did you engage with Japan Post uh, on some of these challenges that Bruno was talking about uh, in in determining um, how how do you support Japan Post in its um, possible diversification into some of these other additional services um, in line with public policy objectives, but also uh, in line with what you said was a was a key criterion that it should remain profitable. Um, and, and as part of that dialogue, uh, how did you engage or did Japan Post, uh, how was Japan Post encouraged to engage with other um, uh, players within uh, either the postal sector as a whole or, or, or the broader economy? 
that it will be very interesting to hear how uh, MIC approached this, uh, I'm sure for our colleagues from other governments. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, thank you very much for uh, excellent uh, question. And uh, yes, actually, um, yeah, it's um, not an uh, easy task to coordinate uh, such um, um, public uh, kind of uh, services by the post. Uh, especially, uh, there are some conflicts between the government institutions. Uh, for example, um, now, uh, more and more post offices are, are providing with uh, uh, municipal services, for example, uh, in the uh, remote area, uh, there is no longer the branch of the municipal government. So the, uh, the post office is uh, uh, required or requested to provide them. However, the, um, and uh, my uh, section in the government would like to promote it, but uh, there is a section uh, in charge of the regional governments, and they actually esteem the uh, role of the uh, regional government. So uh, sometimes they are uh, reluctant to uh, to to open <laughs> the uh, such function to the uh, the post offices. So, oh, so, so this is not easy task, but the key word is probably just the communication. And uh, so the uh, Japan Post need to uh, uh, request to uh, our sections in MIC, of course, but uh, I recommend uh, the uh, Japan Post to also go to the, uh, the um, other sections or other ministries in church, in, for example, or in terms of health, aid, uh, the, if the Japan Post want to deal with it, uh, they also talk to the, uh, the uh, Ministry of Health uh, uh, in Japan. And, uh, and, and so that is, uh, um, such communication is uh, very important. And uh, however, if it's not overcome, uh, finally the legalization of the, or making new law is finally necessary. So uh, in the, in terms of uh, the uh, COVID uh, co combat, um, the, uh, to address the COVID issues, the uh, government made a very strong law to make uh, various institution uh, possible to uh, uh, um, uh, provide extraordinary services uh, like the public services, uh, including in the post offices. So the, I think the first, the communication between the, uh, the government and the post offices, uh, post Japan Post and also the post Japan Post and private sector, and uh, especially the various sections, related sections in the government sector. But uh, uh, in the last end, it, it's a political <laughs> kind of initiative to make a very strong uh, law uh, with uh, uh, implementation authorities uh, are very important. So there are some steps and uh, some uh, key uh, initiatives to, uh, to go through. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yutaka-san. Um, and I, uh, I thank you for that very important point that you're making, which is um, it's not just in relation to crisis situations uh, or um, uh, you know, where, the, where there is a, a disaster to deal with. Um, this idea of a whole of government approach uh, to national priorities is, is and, and where the post is actually engaged as a partner in that whole of government approach um, is, is, a, is, is what we are finding from the UPU's uh, perspective as a, as a UN organization. Uh, it, it's actually very critical uh, for the success of uh, many policies in, in, in many uh, countries, particularly in developing and least developed countries. Uh, the idea, for example, that uh, if you've identified e-commerce uh, uh, and, 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 and the promotion of SME trade, small and medium enterprise trade as a critical national priority, um, when, when governments approach those sorts of priorities um, from a whole of government perspective, where you have uh, different ministries, different stakeholders, both public and private, as well as the post as part of that dialogue, 
uh, often case, we, we find that um, uh, uh, communication lines begin to be a lot better and it results in, in more coordinated uh, policy frameworks, supporting frameworks, and actually action on the ground. So that, that's, uh, that's a, a, an excellent point. Um, I wanna make sure that uh, you know, participants are aware that they are absolutely free to raise questions that might be burning in their minds to, to pose to the panelists. Please use the chat function and, and we'll pick it up from there. I don't wanna be the only one who's asking questions for sure. Uh, but I do have a, a question for Vincenzo um, uh, before we, we sort of uh, keep progressing with this. Um, uh, Vincenzo, one of the things that we've heard both um, Bruno and, and uh, Yutaka-san say is the importance of, of making sure that the, um, that the commercial, commercialities uh, of a particular service is, is clear, uh, i.e. That the, that the business case is made for it. Um, and, and this seems to be uh, increasingly the approach that governments take to, uh, to, to this because um, what they do not want is an additional burden on, on re uh, relatively stretched um, um, uh, budgets. Um, from the perspective of an operator, Vincenzo, um, do you see uh, some of the services that have been rolled out by Post Italiane uh, in the context of the pandemic or, or possibly even before that? And, and you talked about health services, you also talked about pensions and so on. Uh, do you see these services as um, possibly being long term? Um, services that the post in Italy will continue to engage in because the um, it makes sense from a profit and loss perspective. Uh, it also makes sense uh, from a community engagement perspective. Um, and if and if if it is something that will carry on, what were the the sort of criteria that Post Italiani used in in, in determining um, to what extent that you needed to engage in these services? Uh, uh, thank you, Shiva, for, for, for the in, in, in interesting question. Also, uh, you know, you, you just anticipated a comment that I would uh, like to make to Bruno's in interview on, uh, on, on this issue. Uh, I think it is a very, um, very thin, you know, uh, connection between uh, the providing inclusion by postal operator and making uh, uh, revenues, making profit, you know, and uh, which is obviously something we have to do because as I was telling before, we have our responsibility towards employees, you know, I mean, we could not stop. I mean, we, I mean, everyone was working in, in post Italiana could get its wage, which was, was something which was not, uh, uh, let's say true for any other, uh, employee in a private sector, especially the ones employed in uh, uh, restoration, uh, tourism, and things like that. All that said, I think there is a, a sort of uh, investment that the post can do in this role of inclusion. The inclusion which uh, Obviously, I mean, if you were committed by uh, uh, military arms to uh, uh, to uh, distribute vaccine, you can understand that it was uh, was just cost. You know, <laughs> there were no revenues coming from that. Uh, if we go uh, with the police to, uh, but it's something you know altogether which gives uh, trust to citizen because they feel they are served as citizen, not as customer. I think I've already uh, pointed out that in a, a previous uh, uh, conference we had on financial uh, inclusion where someone from the audience was asking where, which was the recipe of Post Italiana for you know, having uh, you know, this success in financial inclusion. You know, the inclusion is something that you cannot put in place uh, you know, tomorrow morning. It's something that you build step by step. You know, you slowly, you get the, uh, you know, the trust of the customer, you know, and, you know, once he trusts you, you can evolve. On top of that, you know, Post Italiana for his top management have the capability in the years to go to uh, 
reflect on the needs of the customer and have uh, and provide all the services which are were necessary you know which were not only delivering when we uh, faced uh, you know at first the decline of uh, uh, postal items we invested more on financial and now we are in the insurance uh, uh, sector we are investing in sustainability uh, we are uh, also uh, investing in in health we, we are setting a medical center first for employees but we think in the future can be something also for citizens post has have a big opportunity you know it's like you have already the network you just need to develop services is something which obviously has to be you know organized with all the actors institutional actors you know and also with the other partners which will not fail in competition with that you know because this is the state actually in italy where, where we are trying to do the services which uh, uh, which we think are useful uh, re referring to your question actually on the specific services we put uh, uh, in place uh, uh, as emergency services, uh, we did not take them longer as a matter of the fact that we are already back to normality on many of them. We are now uh, delivering a registered mail and parcel with signature normally and the postal office are open. Also, uh, I mean, the situation it has changed a lot since uh, uh, mostly uh, 30 millions of people have uh, get their vaccine. So the situation is getting better day after day. Uh, what we experience that we have the, this capacity to put very quick in place uh, emergency measure. So it's something that we have in the draw. And if it's, uh, if it's needed, we can you know, use it again, you know, because we are already experiencing that. Hope I answered your question. Oh, you, you did, Vincenzo, and thank, thank you very you. much. Again, you, you know, you've come back to these two points, and I know we, we talk a lot about this in, in all our conversations with uh, in, within the UPU uh, with broader stakeholders. Uh, and, and the two points being um, this, this idea of inclusion um, and how uh, the availability of the postal infrastructure allows us, and, and use, you use the words inclusion of the citizen. And, and, I, and, and that really is, in, in some respects, the, the core uh, of, of the value proposition of the post. And in fact, that is indeed the, the, the sort of narrative that we use um, uh, as a UN body about um, the role of the post in trade inclusion, the role of the post in financial inclusion, the role of the post in social inclusion, and it, and it and it is a and uh, it, it's a it's a core value proposition that I, I think it's important for uh, for all of us and including our stakeholders to understand and and and, and value and 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 push it forward. And the second point that you raise is is this trust. And and again, I ask myself. Um, what is it that is special about the post and, and why, why do citizens trust the post? Now, I, I, I think we've got to also be honest with ourselves that that experience isn't necessarily across the board, across the world. Um, and, and as a general proposition, it's probably true, but at core, uh, trust is also dependent on um, you know, the reliability of the post in, 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 in terms of the post getting its basics right. Uh, and, and we see that in, in some parts of the world where the post, um, like it or not, has lost confidence uh, of the citizen uh, because the basics have not been right. And, and that's where I, th I think it's also important for governments to recognize, it, uh, you know, getting the post in the right spot, getting the post uh, uh, supported uh, and uh, recognizing the role of the post through uh, uh, the, the relevant support uh, could actually enhance that trust, and it could then have a develop a virtuous circle 
uh, in terms of the role of the post uh, in, 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 in public policy, as well as in terms of meeting the needs of citizens. So these are a couple of things that I, I think it's, it's worth sort of thinking about as takeaways uh, from, from, from this webinar as well. Now, I understand uh, from my colleague, Susan, that we've got a couple of questions uh, for the panelists. And, and Susan, could you kindly uh, tell us uh, what those are, and then we can try and allocate those. Yes, absolutely. Hello, everyone, and we're glad to have you all here. Uh, we have two questions from Franklin Furtado of Brazil, the Ministry of Science, Technology, Innovation and Communication. The first one uh, is to Bruno. He says, first, uh, great presentation by Copenhagen Economics. Um, and he'd like to know if Bruno can tell us which countries were studied for the pre presentation on the decline in profitability. Yes. The presentation is based on uh, ongoing analysis. It uh, includes multiple inputs. It includes postal literature, which uh, includes econometric empirical studies from, um, from a few uh, countries. I think some of these have included US, UK, and this is an, an, initial, an initial element in the, in the calculation. Based on this, we've developed our own model, and we've also based this on uh, some empirical findings from a survey that uh, we did about a year ago which was open globally, though I think it was mainly uh, European evidence that drove the trends, the trends in, in letter mail and, 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 um, and parcel volumes. Um, so it will be a multiple set of countries, though not the entire set of UPU countries that, that is the evidence uh, for this. Um, how, however, what is most important is that the, uh, whether each country recognizes itself in the trends that are there. And we are aware that there will be different business models in each country. And so the level of profitability, what are the margins for each unit of letter mail, for each unit of uh, parcel does change country by country. And these are the ingredients that we encourage to study research, of course, as the uh, financial, uh, financial uh, um, control um, uh, groups do. And also think looking forward about uh, you know, the best balance for the postal service to, to to find the best uh, the best path to uh, to profitability, so that that, that would be our our uh, our suggestion. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Bruno. I hope that answered um, Franklin's question, but I think he's got another one as well. Susan. Yes, uh, this question is to all three of the panelists, um, and he asks: In the post-COVID era, uh, aside from being a hub for several social and governmental policies. How will the postal services remain essential services, given the fact that there is such uh, an increase in an, an ongoing increase in digitalization of communications? Very good question. Thank you, Franklin. And, and it comes back to a theme that we touched upon in, 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 in Bruno's um, presentation, which was also taken up by Vincenzo. And, and this is about digitization. Uh, and, and how digitization, and also, in fact, Yuta Kassan did talk about uh, this uh, as well in terms of the information database um, or data bank that uh, Japan Post uh, might be involved with. Uh, so it's a very important theme. Um, and, and so if I understand the question, um, it, it seems there's two, two, two parts to it. One is, uh, gentlemen, um, the first part is about um, what are the challenges that digitization raises for posts? Uh, in terms of still being relevant in the services that they provide. Uh, and the second is, is really about the opportunities. Is there ways in which the, the post can actually ride on digitization um, and um, actually enhance their value proposition and also bring greater, greater, greater um, um, diversification in the services that they provide uh, and therefore ultimately leading to a more sustainable uh, postal operator. Now, maybe um, I, I'd, I'd perhaps start with uh, Yutaka-san on, 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 on the first question, or, 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 or uh, please feel free to address both parts uh, as, you, as you may. Please, Yutaka-san. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, I, I would like to raise one example about uh, um, the, yes, uh, for the question. And, uh, uh, yeah, I think some, some months ago, or uh, Japan Post uh, um, had had a kind of the uh, cooperation uh, contract with the Lakuten. Lakuten is a, 
um, e-commerce giant in Japan, and actually fourth uh, the mobile company in in Japan. So, uh, so this is I think the it has a great potential for uh, Japan Post to uh, uh, to strengthen its competitiveness and. Uh, uh, Lacten is also uh, uh, taking advantage of this chance because, uh, as I said, uh, uh, Japan Post has a lot of uh, the big data, and Lacten would like to uh, use it. And uh, also, uh, Lacten uh, would like to put uh, the mobile terminal uh, station in the post offices. And uh, Japan Post would like to have the, uh, the business uh, uh, skills or the uh, tips of the, uh, the e-commerce from uh, Lactem. So, uh, so these uh, allies or the collaborations are the one of the keys uh, for the post to be um, to competitive. But uh, at, at the same time, from the government point of view, uh, so to uh, um, keep the uh, fairness of the competition is also important because the uh, the Japan Post. Uh, uh, network is uh, utilized by Lacten uh, exclusively. The other uh, companies like the Docomo and other uh, mobile companies or the e-commerce giants can't use the uh, Japan Post. So Japan Post is uh, a very important infrastructure for Japan. So, uh, so Japan MIC would like, to, uh, would like the Japan Post uh, network open to other company as well. And uh, that is actually uh, for the Japan Post to be free to uh, collaborate with other companies as well. So from the public uh, uh, policy point of view, so such a macro or big, big picture uh, econ economic uh, policy is important. So the, to keep openness uh, for of the Japan Post network and allies, uh, are important and it's also good for the Japan Post and Japan's economy and Japan's uh, social uh, um, health or um, soundness. Yeah, thank you. Uh, th th thank you, uh, uh, Yutaka san. So, in, in essence, if I understood you correctly, what 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 is um, being attempted in Japan is to try and make sure that. Um, you know that the, the post is working with a, a whole range of private sector partners, where um, you know that there is potential to ride on the comparative advantage that each partner brings to that relationship. So, you know, in in the, in, in the example that you gave, you have a, a major e-commerce marketplace working with Japan Post and, and uh, you're combining a, a physical network with a digital network effectively uh, and, and riding on the comparative advantage that e each is bringing. And, and that brings not only value to the citizen, but also to, uh, to Japan Post in terms of commercial viability and, and, and sustainability. So that, that I believe is a, is a very interesting uh, point that you make. And, 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 and it's a, 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 a good uh, example again about the importance of dialogue and cooperation uh, yes and uh, also the uh, so i'd like to we we mic would like to keep the japan post network also for other sure. uh, networks so that's important for, from the economic policy yes thank you um maybe if i can turn to vincenzo next and vincenzo if you could come back to the two parts that i try to pull out in terms of the the can issues you, of can you remind me which was the uh the left hand the left okay so so the, the first part was about um um you know the the the, the fact that uh, digitization has challenges for posts. Um, you know, not everyone's at, at the same level of digitization, and and how does that actually um, you know, potentially impede uh, the post? Uh, and how can that be overcome? The second, again, um, sort of broadly, I think the theme is: um, uh, can the post overcome those challenges to be? Uh, uh, a value proposition through increased digitization and what sort of services in a digital world would actually make sense? Uh, well, Shiva, actually, um, you know, I mean, let's first of all say in a, in a wider way that uh, 
if we uh, didn't have uh, the, the state of the digitalization we had, uh, we probably could not, uh, you know, uh, challenge this pandemic at all. And, and I refer to all the uh, uh, providers of services, you know, uh, even, you know, in our role of uh, international relation, you know, uh, we had this, this fantastic capability of converting our role, you know, from a physically meeting to a teleconference, you know. Uh, obviously, I would say that Post Italiana was a little bit advantaged in the, uh, in the challenge with digital because, you know, was something we had already invested uh, before. So it was easier for us uh, uh, use uh, all the uh, digital capability for, you know, support as much as possible uh, services uh, uh, where it was not possible to apply physical uh, uh, practice we used to uh, we used to do uh, uh, before uh, so so i would say that in the end we didn't really saw impact on the us so uh, uh, caused by the the, the pandemic uh, we also respected the, the quality objectives of service which were not changed by the uh, italian authority uh, as, as part of annual check, obviously there were some results that were corrected just because of the force majeure that were not only applied in Italy, but as you know, uh, by the communication uh, was, were, was a, a normal request of uh, uh, many countries. Uh, uh, in these, you know, I mean, the possibility of using where are possible uh, uh, digital services is like, you know, where we say, where we're saying before, uh, we experienced the possibility not to collect the signature by the customer, but uh, do, do it by the, the postman. At the same time, digitally speaking, we could uh, inform the customer that the uh, item was, had been delivered, you know. So, I mean, you know, all the, the, the digital knowledge we had at that time was really useful for, you know, uh, avoiding any gap in the provision of services. Thank you, Vincenzo. And um, I'm very mindful that we're coming close to the end of our session. And But I do okay. want to give Bruno an opportunity to address that those two specific points, um, sorry, that the, the, the question on digitization raised by Franklin, because I, uh, Bruno did touch upon this issue about digitization and the comparative advantage that it, it is creating in the market space. So Bruno, please share with us some of the, the findings that you, uh, you know, Copenhagen Economics has, has, has pulled up on, on, on this front. Yes, and I will be very brief, my, mindful of the time, uh, essentially digitization is a double-edged sword for the for the sector. It provides uh, uh, large opportunities for um, new and old services to be conveyed more and more efficiently. I think some of the role of the post as a, when we think about infrastructure and assets that can be shared across multiple services. This is what we call economies of scope synergies in economics and business. Well, the brand and the trust that the postal institution has with city consumers who are also seen as citizens. It's an important asset and can be reused and used to stimulate digitization and better outcomes via digitization. So that's that's an incredible opportunity. It applies also to uh, already existing services such as e-commerce delivery, where the more e-commerce is taken up across countries, the more opportunities for business are there for all players, including the post in this segment. However, the other side of the double-edged sword is the impact it has on traditional forms of um, paper-based communication. So that is still the elephant in the room, and it is particularly important the more countries' uh, uh, postal demand is made of uh, bulk mail, uh, government to consumer, government to citizen, and business to consumer communications. And this is a, an opportunity to continue to tap into that those business to consumer relationships, but also a value at risk insofar as the new digital tools and the new digital mandate from the state creates a risk that uh, that uh, traditional ways of communication will be not just complemented, but also substituted by uh, the digital tools. So the jury is still out on that one. 
However, it is a, a process to be managed country by country. And uh, I think the digital discussion will continue uh, staying with us for a long time and it will continue being closely enmeshed with the COVID impact uh, conversation. So looking forward to hear more about this. Thank you, Bruno, and, and, and those are excellent points. So um, I'm just wondering, Susan, whether there are any more questions for us and, and for the panelists? Uh, no, we don't have any more in the chat today. Okay, if, thanks very much, Susan. If, if possible, I would like just to complement what Bruno said just uh, sure, uh, quickly, shortly. Uh, indeed, I mean, uh, uh, what, what uh, Bruno differentiated is, is uh, indeed uh, you know, something that uh, uh, is the reality, you know. But on the other end, uh, uh, re relating to the second point, I mean, the fact that uh, obviously the digitalization uh, is a cutting edge for the, uh, uh, for the uh, traditional uh, post, you know, traditional mail. This is an opportunity for two reasons. The first, because we, as a postal operator, we knew that before it happened. And so we had the time, while the volume are declining, to uh, try to do something, OK? Imagine if, if this was something which could up, you know, would have happened you know, in six months. You know? It's something we are talking about a long time ago. So the opportunity is that at least we know that we have a problem. Okay. The second one is that uh, there are obviously uh, possibility to invest in digital, and uh, and as I was saying before, uh, this is a, a message for Post to uh, try to diversify services as much as possible. Okay, because it's sure that we will lose uh, the traditional Post, but of course we will be uh, much more. Uh, let's say, impacted by uh, e-commerce, parcel. I understand that the profit are different because obviously, you know, I mean, uh, uh, managing in you know, a packet is much more, you know, uh, let's say, a timely consuming than a single letter that, that can be easily managed for, by automated uh, machine. But, you know, I mean, it's something that can anyway lead a sort of uh, reconversion that, uh, uh, postal entities can do following that. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Vincenzo, uh, because that uh, is, um, uh, is excellent because it, it leads quite naturally to um, our wrap up and, and to try and pull out two or three things. And I, I, I uh, seek the indulgence of everyone here if I can just try and pull out some of the themes that we've covered, which are which are important themes that we've heard in the past, we've talked about, but in the context of even the pandemic, it's also clear uh, based on what we've heard today that those themes remain highly relevant for us, uh, both in a intergovernmental organization, um, in, a, in a business perspective as an operator, but also importantly from a, a broader economy uh, uh, sense. Um, one, of the, one of the key things I've heard here today is, is is as, as Vincenzo said, the importance of diversification. And it's about thinking out of the box and, and, and recognizing that uh, what the post has and what the postal sector represents is an infrastructure of trust and human contact, which um, potentially lends itself to the delivery of a whole range of services. It's not just about parcels or letters. It could be anything. Um, uh, so long as it sort of meets that criteria uh, uh, and, 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 and the comparative advantages that the post presents. Um, what is also part of that discussion um, or, 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 uh, or, or thinking, uh, which is important, is that it's not just about rolling out these services willy-nilly. It's about also recognizing uh, the importance of having a business case in rolling out those services um, and uh, recognizing that the profitability and the commerciality of, 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 the, of the provision of the services is critical. Um, the second thing that I thought was very important, um, which is a theme that's running across the board uh, in everything that we're doing in the UPU is digital transformation and the importance of the post uh, becoming a key, 
a clear player in the in the digital world. Um, and here we have uh, a variety of experiences. Uh, we have um, uh, very developed posts like Post Italiani and, and Japan Post uh, being in a space to be able to actually capitalize on what they've already done uh, to, to meet uh, the challenges of the future, but we also have many countries, uh, posts in many countries who are not in that space. And therefore uh, the, the, the critical importance of focusing on digital transformation. Um, the third is, uh, and this is a theme that uh, Yutaka-san particularly talked about, it's about whole of government uh, cooperation and communication, as well as in conjunction in terms of partnerships with, with other players. Um, this is actually quite critical. It, it, it's, um, uh, we, we see it ourselves in terms of the work that we do uh, in many developing and least developed countries, but, but a whole of government and partnership approach is, is, is really quite critical. And, and the final point is, um, it's about inclusion. And, and again, uh, I use the word inclusion in a, in a broad sense. Um, the, the, the post, because of, by virtue of its network and because of its human touch, uh, is capable of being a, uh, a channel for inclusion across a whole range of things. Uh, and again, it comes back to the point, my first point, uh, the importance of thinking out of the box, both as an operator, as well as a government in terms of how you might actually rely on the post uh, to achieve things. Um, so those seem to be really some very key themes uh, which have come you know, in, in our previous discussions, but clearly even in the context of the pandemic, I, I think these are uh, still remain relevant and will re uh, remain relevant uh, in terms of our future and, uh, of, of the postal sector and, and, and policy making for, uh, for the future. Um, finally, just to wrap up, um, a couple of announcements. One is um, we were uh, scheduled to hold our second webinar uh, on the 24th of June uh, on quality of service. Uh, this will be taken up on the 1st of July. Um, um, it's been postponed because we wanted to make sure that we had top-notch um, panelists uh, available to us. So it, this will be done on the 1st of July. Um, our third webinar will still go ahead as planned. And, and this is scheduled uh, for the 29th of June, uh, which will be uh, on funding, state funding of the postal sector and possibly other developments within the postal sector. Again, I want to take this opportunity to thank um, uh, the three panelists for their time and commitment and for sharing uh, their experience and, and views. I thank people who have also asked for questions. Um, and uh, I want to thank everyone for taking the time to be with us. Uh, and I hope it has been a, a very useful exercise, a useful uh, webinar and something uh, that we can take a few key points back with us uh, as we go about our daily lives uh, over the weeks and months ahead of us. So thank you very much, everyone. And thank you for your time. Good to see all of you.